Hey, baby, and welcome to Feed the Beast Unstable, guys. Today we are starting a new adventure into a mod pack. This is kind of a uh, this is kind of a rest stop on our way to the proper 1.7 mod packs that are coming out. We are playing Feed the Beast Unstable. Um, the guys on Deathcraft got tired of waiting around for a 1.7 mod pack to get kind of put out. So we're playing this mod pack. It's kind of unstable. Ergo the name. So let's get to it. Let's uh, quit screwing around here and let's get to it. You guys may have noticed I was wearing sunglasses. Um, yeah, I was messing with my mod skin and on vanilla Minecraft I could turn the sunglasses off. But on these modded Minecrafts I, they're, they're constantly on so I'm, I'm eventually going to take them off of my skin but yeah so we started our adventure here on unstable um the guys xp crafted and brink the gamer have already started way ahead of us and as you can see they got some farms set up and they've got like a little volcano base going here it looks like they're playing around with some of these mod packs uh or these mods this one is this is an iron miner by progressive automation um it looks like it mines for you i guess you need cobblestone and coal and you need tools and all kinds of stuff i don't know we, we'll have to mess with these i'm not sure actually there's a ton of mods in here let's take a quick peek at them um looks like we got all kinds of stuff let's ah i hate the way this works sometimes okay we've got advanced genetics applied energistics two backpacks bobbles build craft biomes of plenty of course blood magic blue power Batania, which we're going to get to here in a second. I've been playing around with that off camera. Um, carpenter's blocks, chisels, dense ores, Enchiridion, uh, Ender IO, Ender Tech. What was that? Ender Tech? I don't even know what this one is. Ender Tank Valve. Oh, this looks good. Cool stuff. Oh, equivalently, equivalent exchange. Oh, we definitely want to mess with that. That looks cool. And just a ton of other ones. Um, it's not a whole lot, but it is a good amount. We've even got simply jetpacks on here, so we definitely want to work our way into getting one of those. We've got some Tinker stuff. We've got some Thermal Expansion. I wonder what version of Thermal Expansion they have on here, if they have the latest greatest or not. I kind of doubt it, but maybe they do. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, let's get to it. Let's uh, take a peek and see what XB Crafted and Brink have been up to. Um... Looks like they've got some Ender I.O. machines here. Yeah, th let's see here. Um, hold on. Let me get this stuff turned off here. Alright, so it looks like he has a sag meal. And what this does, I think, is grind ore into dust. The dust go... You put your you put your ores here. They get ground into dust. And then they go down here and they get cooked out into various metals and whatnot. So it looks like we've got a good start here. Um, I've put a few of the ores I got through mining in here and it looks like we're gonna we're gonna have like a community pool of resources that's fine by me oh man look at all this weird stuff dna decryptor uh dna extractor dna splitter man there's a lot of dna stuff and then a combustion generator okay so it looks like they have gotten started with advanced genetics what have they got here night vision a basic gene Something or other and something. I don't understand this stuff. We'll get we'll get to that. Um, ooh, what's this? A sky stone chest. Oh, this is some applied energistic stuff. It looks like those guys went out and found themselves a meteor. Um, I think the new applied energistics requires you to find a meteor and get materials from that. So that is absolutely insane that, you know, the mod pack or the mod is so futuristic it comes from outer space. Like, you can't even... You can't even fathom it until you find... You have to, like, reverse engineer alien technology into into the AE system. Which it looks like they have something set up here to do that. They've got an inscriber. Okay, I guess this is how you make your chips. Delicious chips. Where do they make their guacamole? I don't know. Ooh, it's nighttime outside. We're going to take a peek down here real quick. We've got a Tinker's Construct Smeltery. A Lava Drum. Cool. So it looks like they've got a good start. We're going to take a quick sleep here. And then we're going to I'm going to show you what I've been doing with the Batania mod. The first thing you want to do when starting Batania is make this book. This book is really easy to make. You just combine a book, any old book, 
well, just a regular blank book with a sapling and you get the Lexica Botania. And when you click it open, look at that. This is amazing. Look, the pages even flip as you go through it. And the very first thing you're wanna gonna do is go through basics and mechanic, read everything. Cause this book is very, um, it's very thorough and all the information is in here. And if you, you, if you think you've messed something up, it's because you didn't read the book. Um, so yeah, that has bitten me in the butt a couple of times. And then I reread the chapter that I skimmed through and the answer was right there. So read the book. It's got a lot of good info in it. We set up this island over here and I'm gonna show you what we've done. The first flower you wanna make in the Batania mod is this guy here. This is a pure daisy. And if I click on it, it should take me right to it. Or do I have to hit question mark? As you can see, there's like a little icon. If I hit question mark, nope, that doesn't do anything. Maybe if I shift click on it, here we go. It takes you right to the entry. The pure daisy is not only the most basic, but also the most important flower a botanist can have. This flower turns wood and stone into this stuff. It turns it into living wood and living stone. And if I have any wood over here, I will show it to you real quick. It takes a little time to happen, but basically you just surround one of these flowers with either wood like that, and you can go all the way around it, or with stone. And I have a good amount of stone here. So just like this. And it takes a little time to do it, but it'll eventually turn it into living rock and living wood. So yeah, we'll just let that sit. And yeah, then you're got you're you're well on your way to creating some resources to use in the Botania mod. Oh yeah. So the next part is to make this guy here. This is a petal apothecary. This is where you're gonna make your flowers. Um, the petal apothecary requires water. So you put it in like that and then you throw petals and whatnot into it. And then afterwards you throw like a seed and you get yourself pretty flowers like this guy here, a day bloom. This is also how you create your pure daisy. So let's try and make ourselves a day bloom. Um, we'll look it up in the book here. Actually, we'll do this. You shift click on it. It opens it up to what you need. Okay. The day bloom is the most basic and rudimentary generating flower. Simply put, it performs modified and modified photosynthesis process in order to transform sunlight into mana. And mana is the power system we are using here. So this is how you want to lay them out when you have them on the ground. Oh, hold on. As you can see, these are now turning into their, their materials that we are waiting for. So we can now harvest these. Look at that. Pop, 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 pew. Oh, that is so cool. I love that effect. All right, so then you can harvest them and use them in your various recipes. So yeah, we got a little distracted here by this, by this, this popping sound. But let's get back to what we're doing here. So shift click on this. We'll be right back to where we were. So in order to make this flower, you have to throw a mystical yellow petal, two of them, a an orange petal, and a light blue petal into your petal apothecary. And then at the very end, you have to throw some seeds in there. Now, not all seeds will work, but I think most of them will. So we're gonna try these cotton seeds and see if that does it. If not, you can use like grass seeds, not grass seeds, you can use like wheat seeds and all that stuff. So yeah, let's get to this. So we need two yellow ones, boop, boop, a blue one and an orange one. And if you guys can see, they're floating around in there and then you just throw your seed in and you get a day bloom, you get your flower. So it's that easy. You just gotta throw the proper resources in and you get it. So these guys are sitting here and they are generating mana, but we need to find a way to collect it. And let's see here. We, I made this thing called a wand of the forest. Let's take a look. I wonder if I could throw it down on the ground and look at it with the book. Nope, doesn't work that way. All right, so let's open this up. Let's go back. Basics, mana manipulation. Um, Where does it say, where can I make the wand of the forest? Here we go. This is a general multi-use tool for the botanist and you make it out of living wood and petals. So here's the recipe. You can use any color flower petals and yeah. Oh yeah, by the, by the way, 
if you're ever wondering where you get the petals, you get them from these flowers. These flowers are everywhere in the world. Just go find them. And you just need to get as many as you can because it requires all kinds of colors to do some of these uh, different flowers. And I think there is actually a flower that creates the flowers too. So you can have a flower that generates these flowers. No problem. I think you can also bone meal and get them. Not sure, but it's worth a try. So give that a try, will you? Jeez. <laughs> so what do we want to do next? We've got our wand of the forest, but we want to find a way to collect the mana that these flowers are producing. So let's go back here. And we want to make ourselves call a thing called a mana pool and a mana spreader. The first thing we want to do is make this spreader. Let's look for the recipe for it. So it is living wood, gold, and a petal of some sort. We're going to have to go grab ourselves some gold. So let's run back to the base real quick. And we'll grab ourselves a gold ingot. We'll probably grab ourselves maybe one or two so that we don't have to run back here again. But it's not too far away. It's no problem. Oh, they're going to be in here, aren't they? So we're going to grab one, two, three. And go back. And let's make ourselves a mana spreader. Boop. I'm glad I made this little bridge because getting to this island that I created could be difficult if I was swimming in a boat or just swimming in general. So let's grab ourselves maybe some petals we don't care about. And yeah, so it was like this, this, and this. Right? Oh, we used too many. Boop. All right, let's make ourselves maybe one more of these. Just so we have it. So there's our mana spreaders. We can use this to point the mana towards a mana pool. And a mana pool, I think, is just like that. Yeah. So this is kind of like your battery, if you're thinking tech mod sort of way. So if we take this mana spreader like this... Okay, I think that'll work. And then we put the mana pool right in front of it. And then I think we gotta click it with this to that. And this will this mana pool is now collecting mana. At the moment, these flowers produce very little mana. You have to have like a ton of these day blooms to get anywhere. But they're collecting the mana here in this mana pool. We're going to need a lot of these. We can. We actually have enough to make maybe one more. So let's get to that. Let's see here. Look. All right. Um, what was it? Two of these. One of these. And one of these. And a seed. There we go. We got one more. And you got to lay these out in a certain way or you get less mana. So the way you can check how much mana is in here but is by using your wand of the forest you can also use your wand to i think direct these in different ways I'm not positive maybe a shift click on it i have no idea how to point this thing all right whatever but at the moment we're just going to use straight lines so it's not a big deal cool so this is collecting and yeah, so we're gonna eventually use this mana to make other flowers in the book that have like certain cool properties and whatnot. So let's see what we should try to make next. Um, let's see here, here's a mana detector. We don't need that. Uh, mana distributor, a mana lens. Hmm, let's go back and so functional flora. These are flowers that actually do something. Um, a really good one to have is this Agricarnation. Um, the Agricarnation is good for crops. And this this flower will make crops grow faster. So if you have this, this gets a little bit complicated. Because it requires a rune. And shift you have to shift click it to see it. And you, as you can see, that rune also requires two more runes. Oh my goodness. And then this requires... Yeah, this gets pretty complicated. So what we want to probably do is work on creating maybe some better generating flora. Um, the next one up looks like is something called an endo flame. So let's see if we can make this. This requires a, a, a mana petal. A mana petal is just a petal you throw in this mana pool. And if there's enough mana in here, it will infuse the petal with mana. 
So, yeah, let's see if we can give that a try here real quick. It looks like... I, I'm wondering if I even have enough mana in here. So let's give it a try. Nope, I do not have enough mana in here even to do that. So, yeah, we've definitely got to keep this going. And have it generate enough mana so that when we throw a mana pedal in there, boom. So yeah, guys, um, I'm not sure what we're going to do. I could wait for this to generate enough mana and then bring you guys back. So we're going to take a quick sleep anyway to keep our day bloom flowers from working. Um, I think we're out of yellow mana petals or regular petals. Let's see in here. Yeah, I'm running low on flowers. I definitely got to go around the world and collect some more so that we have them. So yeah, I think what we're going to do next episode is get to making some better flowers. And we're going to probably work on creating a runic altar. There are a bunch of cool generating flowers in here. We've messed with the hydrangeas before. Um, these guys eat water. And they eat up still water. So if you can find a way to create an infinite source of water, you can get have this guy create mana from it so like as you can see here this would be a good setup um yeah the next thing we want to do is make this thing i think is called the runic altar and this is how we create our runes to do things but as you can see it requires either a mana pearl or a mana diamond if you shift click that wait why didn't that not work ah. all right let's go back basics here we go runic altar Bump, bump, bump. So if I shift click, as you can see, it requires this much mana. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly why that's flipping back and forth like it is. Boop, 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 boop. But it requires a lot of mana, and as you can see, we don't have a whole bunch. We are still collecting it. This, These are the first steps, so yeah. So guys, I think we're going to wrap it up there. We're going to collect more mana, and we're going to get to it, guys. As you can see, I'm a cool dude. Hanging out with some flowers. Oh yeah, baby. So guys, as always, I want to thank each and every one of you handsome and gorgeous people for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, give it a big old thumbs up. This was going to be a short run series until we get a proper 1.7 mod pack ready to use. One that's nice and stable. And that's why we call this one unstable. And until next time, guys, we'll see you all real soon. Bye!